So today I'm here to tell you the story of the North East Waste Business Project. As you heard, I've been running the pro project coordinator for the last six years, and I come from a background of marketing and business. So I'm delighted to share with you how we've taken the project to new heights by implementing a brand strategy approach, which is quite different to how the project had been previously delivered. But before we talk about that, I'm going to run through some branding basics, as I really hope that you come away inspired and thinking about how you might like to apply this approach to your own brand. Yeah. Click up. <laughs> Have the last laugh. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's go. White one. Thank you. What is a brand? I'll give you a hint. A brand is not a logo. There are a bunch of definitions available all over the internet and in textbooks, but I like to keep it simple. Let's interchange brand with the well understood term personality. The personality or brand you develop for your project forms a perception of your project in people's minds. It's how people think about you and feel about who you are as an organisation and what you do. Getting your branding right would do much of the heavy lifting for you and propel your project to success. And just like any brand, uh, sorry, any personality, a brand is multifaceted. We're going to take a look at each of these facets because understanding the opportunities available associated with them can help you develop your own brand and bring your project to life. Oh, that didn't look like that. First of all, what is your purpose, your objective? We all know being clear about your purpose is critical to the success of your project and your objective absolutely underpins your brand strategy and everything you do with it. Essentially, who are you? Who needs to know? How will they find out and why should they care? I like to begin with the end in mind. If you can clearly picture your end result, developing a strategy to get there is so much easier. What's in a name? A well-chosen project name is, is an essential brand asset. It stands for something. The right name is timeless, tireless, easy to say and remember. You want it to be meaningful, to communicate something about the essence of your project and support the image you want your project to convey. It needs to be distinctive and unique, easy to pronounce, spell and crucially share on your socials. Make sure it has positive connotations in the space you intend to deliver your project. Can it be owned and trademarked? And is there a domain name available for it? Think visual. Does it lend itself to graphic presentation in a logo and in text? The right name will capture the imagination and connect with the people you want to reach. So what are your project's core values? It's key attributes. What does it stand for and what makes it unique? Define these so that it can be clearly communicated throughout the design of your project. Because ultimately, the design, look and feel is the visual language of your project. This includes images, typography and colour palettes. Use images that represent your customers or target audiences, making them positive, fun and engaging. When looking at typefaces, consider if they convey feeling, do they have personality? Make sure that they work in a range of sizes, are legible, and cover the range of your project brand application needs. Use colour to evoke emotion and express personality as it stimulates brand association. Think Coca-Cola. Positioning. To understand where to position your project, do the research to understand your target audience's needs and understand what makes your project different. When communicating your project's positioning, remember the best brands speak with one distinctive voice and staying on message is the brand mantra. Also consider when developing your project that language and tone provide the opportunity to be intentional. Do you want to engage or lecture? Language is a vitally important communication and engagement tool and something that's easily overlooked in many projects. Brand positioning also includes your channels of communication, might be advertising, TV, radio or print. Consider the different types of print media. Who are their readership? Other options are direct, direct mail, events and some or all of the socials. 
This will be largely influenced by where your target audience are hanging out. Who does your project hang out with? This includes stakeholders, other complementary pro projects, products, businesses or services. How can you make people aware of your project? You might consider events, editorial, maybe even engaging a brand ambassador that has great synergy with what you do. Personality or brand varies dramatic, dramatically between projects, businesses, products and services. Toyota and Rolls-Royce both produce functionally the same product, but their answers above to the above are very different. Once you have all the basics in place, you need to consider what your touch points are going to be. This graphic shows many examples of touch points where your potential target audience will come into contact with your project. Largely for the types of projects many of us are involved in, think website, marketing, collateral, emails, events and social media. But this is only limited by your imagination. To get cut through, think different and be different. Touch points done well will ensure that the experience of dealing with you is consistent, seamless and authentic. It can build loyalty and create customers for life. This is your very greatest opportunity to influence how people feel about your project. Where will customers experience your brand and what experience would you like them to have? This hierarchy shows how a brand should be developed. Everything is driven by your purpose, and as you can see, your logo is an element of your brand, but it doesn't tell the whole story. The brand identity really comes together to create, you develop really comes together to create your brand experience. This is where the magic happens. Brand identity is tangible and appeals to the senses. You can see it, feel it, hold it, hear it, and watch it move. It makes big ideas and meanings accessible. Brand identity takes disparate elements and unifies them into whole systems. And this has been the intention of the Waste Warriors project. To develop a brand that's instantly recognisable and understood. One that's succinct, that makes waste and recycling information simple and accessible for the thousands of businesses across the Northern Rivers. But that's not where we started. The project's in its 14th year and used to be known as the Business Waste Reduction Project. It's quite a mouthful and not very user friendly. The purpose of the project is to assist businesses across the seven local government areas of the Northern Rivers to reduce their waste and recycle more. Originally, the project worked intensively with between 15 to 30 businesses per year, developing case studies from the learnings and achievements. Six years ago, the decision was made to take more of a marketing and promotional approach. And this is when I came along and Waste Warriors was born. Guess what we started with? A logo and a pretty bodgy TVC. So our results were okay, but we had to spend a lot of advertising budget to get those results. And we soon realised that this is not something that the people we wanted to work with or be seen with were interested in. We eventually realised that to get the results and the momentum we were looking for, to get that real positive change happening, we needed to create a brand that businesses could be proud to share and leverage for their own promotion and recognition. It had to reflect our key attributes and values, collaborative, positive, relentlessly positive, and confident. When engaging business, confidence is the key. Our newer visual identity was friendly and succinct. It resonated across different applications and supported our objective with imagery, happy, smiling faces and lots of business types. Advertising, continuing the look and the feel of the brand, but also creating a sense of community. These ads were published in the local weekly print media in seven different papers, so each of the business names were very familiar to anyone seeing the ad. The effect, effect and intention were twofold. Whilst we were recognising businesses for their achievements, we are also attracting businesses to the project. The website, simple, informative and straight to the point. Business resources had to be packaged up and systemised. They had to be relevant by specific industry type, local government area and ready to go. Crucially, with the least amount of perceived effort by business. 
promotional tools were developed so that business could promote themselves across, across a wide range of platforms, including email signatures, shop fronts, internally to staff and externally to customers and, of course, on social media. Social media has been a significant tool for Waste Warriors. It's where we can have our most authentic brand voice. It's where we get to shine, to show our personality through language and imagery in what we share and who we hang out with. This is so crucial to your brand identity. There's no other place that can encapsulate your brand quite so powerfully. Social media is a place where we can have inspiring and engaging conversations with businesses about waste and recycling issues. We can seek out businesses doing amazing things and promote them, even if they're not a waste warrior business, because this is about true engagement for the ultimate objective of improved business behaviour when it comes to waste and recycling. This is not about individual project promotion. This is about building the conversation and expectations for broad behavioural change and social norms. Next up is some branded video content that we've made recently. These clips will be used across social media to further build engagement in the Waste Warriors project in the future. We've made five of these videos, each showcasing different industry types across our region, and this is one of our favourites. I'm hoping we can go ahead. My name is Chris Kaur, I'm a teacher at Mount St. Patrick College, Mwilwambar. My name is Isabel Waugh and I go to Mount St. Patrick College. My name is Nitara Broughton and I go to Mount St. Patrick College, Mwilwambar. And I'm in Year 12 and a part of the Environment Group. The firm decision to become a waste-wise school probably started about four years ago. I think me and Ms. Long, along with a few people in the year above me, we approached Mr. Kaur and we just stated that we have to recycle because we thought it was unacceptable that so much waste was going into general waste when it could have been recycled. The Waste Warriors Bin Trim Initiative has really assisted us in that firstly we set goals and we did an audit in the beginning and saw how much waste we were actually sending to landfill. And then we identified with Northeast Waste ways that we could reduce that. So we have um, stationed new um, recycling bins in particular busier areas of the school, um, such as near staff rooms and um, where we sit and eat lunch. The aim is that it's more easy to recycle and it becomes second nature that kids recycle. And hopefully the next generation of students that come through won't even think about recycling, that'll be their normal behaviour. Now that we've become a more waste-wise conscious school, and now that we're recycling more than half of our waste, I feel very proud and, yeah, proud to be a part of this community. A particular point in time springs to mind here. Um, Karen Rudkin came in from North East Waste and spoke with a group of kids, and you've seen some of those students today. That really inspired them and from there we really worked on the action plan and I found it really helpful and I'd really recommend North East Waste and that project um, to others. It really gets kids involved and it's really user friendly from a teacher point of view as well. As you heard during that clip, one of our strongest brand touch points are the people involved in the Waste Warriors project. When we go to see a business, it's very important that they understand that we're not a regulatory body. We're on their side to demystify the world of waste, to remove as many pain points as possible because we understand that waste is not their core business. And consistent with our brand promise, all of our communications are kept very simple. Our action plans are a maximum of three pages and are graphics and image based, and we make great use of dot points. It's this approachability and ease that I believe businesses coming back, keeps businesses coming back for more. So what have been the success factors from creating the Waste Warriors brand? Partnerships. We're now partnering regionally with like-minded and complementary organisations who share the same objectives with whom we can cross-promote and share resources. Self-momentum. 
We're being contacted by other organisations within New South Wales and interstate who love what we do and are going to duplicate our project for businesses in their area. The other type of self-momentum we're experiencing is from people who've worked with our project and as they change places of employment and knowledge sharing and introducing positive change to their workplace by engaging waste warriors to assist the new business. Project recognition. Media know us, industry groups know us. Our brand exists in the minds of our target audience, Northern Rivers businesses. We are regularly being contacted by businesses for help they are coming to us. In fact, at the moment we're at capacity and we're not having, we're not, we don't have anything with, with, with a budget, an advertising budget. In the previous two rounds of bin trim, engagement has been easier and I believe the Waste Warriors brand has been a contributing factor in submitting a strong funding application. Top tips for brand success. Know your audience. Finding out what they need will help you be of the most value to them. This will also inform you of potential touch points and brand applications you might like to develop. Oh, sorry, missed that one. Develop a good brief and think big. I believe we have such a great opportunity to create a legacy with our projects, ones that can be developed once and used many times over. And this all comes back to the planning stages. Find a great designer who understands brand. It should be a collaborative process with a shared vision and they should know the project's objectives as well as you and bring a lot of ideas to the table. And finally, enjoy the process. Never underestimate the power of intuition and creativity. As the late Steve Jobs once said, those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world usually do. That's it. Thanks everyone. <laughs>